Obsession, a Dvar Torah for Parashat Shlach Lecha. There's a fine line between consistency and obsession and I'm unsure if I crossed it. There's no secret that the guideline for this year's videos on Safil Bamidbar is the Levim's leadership role and meanwhile, if I were to give myself a grade, I think it would be higher than what I got upon graduating high school. Don't ask. I found this week a bit more challenging and I'd love to get your opinion about the final product. The main theme in this week's Parsha is the sin of the spies and it has nothing to do with the Levim. Their traditional role is to work in the Mishkan, does not play a role in this story, nor do they have any representative among the leaders who go into Canaan. In other words, the opening data does not support my hypothesis. It is not a side story, but a long affair that spans over two long episodes with many heroes and anti-heroes. Apparently, there are plenty of opportunities to address the role of the Levim, and this may be the point where a nice theory crashes to the shores of reality. But I don't plan on giving up yet without a fight. If we can't find the Levim in the surface, we'll just need to dig a bit. The story of the Sin of the Spies begs for comparison with another story with very similar features, the Golden Calf. Both have a 40-day preface. Both happen in anticipation of a great event that is rejected due to the sin. Both happen outside of Moshe's presence. In both, the Lord of the World threatens to destroy the people, and in both, Moshe prays so that this does not happen. In both cases, when the people hear about the punishment, they oppose it. But... Here comes the striking difference. After the sin of the calf, Moshe returns to Mount Sinai, and within 40 days, the Israelites will receive the second Luchot. After the sin of the spies, the Israelites will try to enter Eretz Kran, but Moshe will remain in the camp, and it will not succeed. The penalty for the sin of the calf is the death of about 3,000 people. The punishment for the spies' sin is 40 years in the desert until all your carcasses fall in this desert. I'm not the first to compare between the two sins. Already in the Mishnah, Chazal chose to mention both as parallel. The first of five things that happens in the 17th of Tammuz is the tablets are broken and Antisha Be'av, there is a decree for our ancestors not to enter the land. Therefore, the question of what causes the great difference between both punishments is not a new one. And there are many answers to that, and I will not repeat them. What I will do is point out another difference between the two sins, which is the presence of the Levim. Let's start with their special representative, the one to whom the people come when Moshe doesn't descend from the mountain. In the absence of Moshe's presence, the people turn to Aaron and demand, stand up, make us a god. And after making the calf, Moshe and Hashem both come to him with complaints. What has this nation done to you that you have brought this sin upon them? And for they made the calf that Aharon made. During the sin of the spies, Aharon's lack of a role stands out. Although he doesn't do anything in this story, his name is repeated when the spies return to give an account of what happened and what they complained to him, even though he didn't send them. And when Moshe and Aharon fall on his face, it's singular, and when God tells Moshe and Aaron to speak to Bnei Israel again in the singular form, the very mention of his name highlights its irrelevance to the story. If in the sin of the calf the people could come to Aharon with complaints, during the sin of the spies, the responsibility is entirely theirs, and with great responsibility comes great punishment. But the Levim have another role in the sin of the calf that is missing from the sin of the spies. When Moshe descends from the mountain and says, Mila Hashem Eli, the entire tribe of Levi gathers around him. They are the ones who take upon themselves the unpleasant task of removing the evil from among you. They are the ones in the wilderness who keep the guard of the tabernacle of the congregation, so that there will be no anger on the congregation of the children of Israel. They are also the ones who, as soon as they enter the land, will be scattered in cities of the Levites throughout the land to keep the Israelites on the straight and narrow. The sin of the spies has no Levim. They do not gather around Moshe. They do not go back and forth within the camp. This is a double reason for the severe punishment. First, no one atones for the sin. There was no small slap on the wrist, relatively speaking of course, to prevent the child from playing with electricity. Second, and more importantly, 
If you couldn't stand guard now, who's gonna guarantee that you'll be able to fulfill your role in the future? It's irrelevant to bring the people of Israel into such a reality. I believe the answer to this question becomes clear when discussing the korbanot, the mekoshesh and the tzitzit that seal parashat b'alotcha, but that's a task for another time. Did I convince you that this is all about the Levim? I'm convinced, but I think I'm a bit biased. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe and pass it on to a friend, maybe they'll enjoy it too. I'm Dilvi Holtz, one who loves Tanakh.